Can you ever be too grateful? Can you ever ask for too much? Hi, I'm Allie Bierman, and I'm really glad you came by today. You can find me over at yourrelationshipintelligence.com. So I wasn't expecting to make this video today, but a very noticeable, remarkable, eventful thing happened a couple days ago. We had a horrendous storm. Not just the high winds and the lightning and the hail, but it actually knocked down a tree in the yard, as you can see. There's the tree that fell over. Thankfully, it wasn't one of the trees near the house. It's quite a big one. It's a lot of work to get rid of it. We were without power for a full 14 hours and I got a chance to really notice what it must have been like for people 200 years ago who didn't have electricity who had different kind of shelter from the weather and just thinking about it made me even more grateful than I always am for all that I have and for all that I am. Now, I read a lot of books. I also listen to a lot of books. And one of those books I listened to very recently for our group discussion, it's called Enlightenment Now. And much to my surprise, it had nothing to do with spirituality. It was about the fact that the world, maybe it's not really as awful as it appears compared to where it was 10, 20, 50, 100 years ago. We hear the stories of the mother who has to walk two hours each way just to get water for the family, of the millions of people who die each year because they're cooking a fire, use right, indoors, and that pollution is killing people. We hear about a mother who has to walk two hours a day in Ethiopia to get to the market where she can sell enough of whatever she's able to to allow her family just to exist. There are all kinds of stories like that. Maybe it's not as bad as it used to be. Maybe it continues to get better. And yes, it does. But the thing is, how happy and how grateful are you for what you have? I used to live next to the Appalachian Trail and going on the trails all the time, I often wondered, how did people get through the winters? They certainly didn't have the same kind of accommodations that we have. Clearly going to sleep when it gets dark, getting up with the sun, well that's all healthy normal circadian rhythm. But Boy, I got a real taste of it over the weekend without the electricity. Living in the country, we have a pump that runs on electricity that brings the water up from the well. So we had to be very careful and sparse with our water use because once we used what was in the tab or what was in the commode, no more. And we didn't know how long the electricity would be out couldn't open or use the refrigerator or the freezer. All these modern conveniences. No lights. Now I'm somebody who has lots of audio books so I had something to do after dark just listening. And that reminds me. That book Enlightenment Now. You can get it at Audible. And here's the thing. You can get the free download of the book and a 30-day free trial by going to audible.com forward slash Allie B. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash capital A-L-I capital B. So what I did, actually, it's a long book. I think it's eight, nine hundred pages. I just listened to it and I listened to it and I listened to it some more and I got to feeling way better about the world. Okay, and yes, I express my gratitude constantly all day long and I hope you're doing that too because when you do, 
The universe just keeps giving you more for which to be grateful. But can you ever ask for too much? Well, desires are things the universe gives to us. You wouldn't have a desire in your heart unless you also had the means to achieving it. So what does that mean? It means the universe is going to provide the synchronistic events, but you need to know how to listen, how to see, how to recognize the opportunities and the messages that will get you to that desire that's in your heart. So the directions are there. You got to know how to read the map. So how do you feel about gratitude? How do you feel about desires? Where the world is, where it's going? It's a different world that's moving very quickly, isn't it? Look at a picture of somebody from even a hundred years ago in their teens or twenties. They look like somebody today who, well, I'd have to say in their eighties or nineties, they really aged. The people lived back then to 40. So yeah, they were old when they were in their teens and their 20s. Your world is what you make it and for what you choose to make it given all that's available to you. Again, I'm Allie Beerman. You can find me at yourrelationshipintelligence.com.